Hi everyone, welcome. Um, what we're going to do is just go through the wrench tutorial that we already saw in class. Again, you're supposed to be in class seeing these. This is not meant so you can skip and just follow along at home. This is to be something as supplemental as in you're taking notes in class, watching me do this, and you're just using this to kind of see some of the nuances and some of the more intricate things that we um, saw during our live demo. So let's get this thing going. I'm going to go into File, Project Window. We need to always set up our project. I'm going to hit New. I'm going to make this Wrench. And we're going to make this have a home. And I'm going to go to my folder here for my Maya demos. And we'll call that Wrench. So we'll send it. Actually, let's put them into Maya Projects. So I want to show you something here. So let's say that you had a thumb drive and you had Maya projects. So that was your folder. We hit select and now we have wrench, hit accept. Inside of my computer now, under my Maya demos, underneath Maya projects, you'll see now there's a wrench project and that's where all my stuff is gonna go to. You've already seen that we would have two things to download for this. We need the wrench one and wrench two PNG. So we need those. And I'm going to drag those into, making sure I can see where this is supposed to go. I'm gonna drag those into my source images. So wrench one and wrench two. Okay, those are in there now. That's where they're supposed to be. I can now minimize this. And I can also close this. All right, first thing we did was we created some image planes so we'll hit apply and we need to go to the attribute editor and right under image name we're going to change that out so we'll load branch one and I'm going to do that again I'm going to create I'm going to go into my free image plane and I'm going to load wrench two Wrench 2, as you can see, is laying right on top of the other one. And that's not good. So right now we do have image plane shape 2 selected. And I need to be able to rotate this so it is uh, going to be top down facing. So when I actually am looking at it from the Y axis down from top camera, it actually will show me the top of that wrench. Right now it's not doing that. So to be able to do that, what I need to do is I'm gonna go into my channel box and that wrench which is wrench for the image plane 2 if we just look at it in our outliner which remember the outliner can be open and closed here I have that selected I need to click on my rotate for X I'm gonna do that as negative 90 now if I look at it from the top view I can see that it's displaying the way it's supposed to Problem is that it's not in the dead center of my my image, so I'm going to do that. Also, going to push this one back, push this one down. And remember, the reason why we do this is because any content that we create is going to show up in the origin by default. When I model, that's a great place for that to be. Not a great place for the images, since we're working in orthographic. You're not going to have any sort of depth uh, via perspective in our model so it's not going to distort any of the imagery you're not going to have any foreshortening on our objects so it's okay to push back our perspectives or our uh, image planes okay I'm going to select both of these things and add it to a layer we'll call this ref save that and I'll lock it down so I'll tap this to go to R all right now I'm ready to work first thing I'm going to do is change my viewport to go into my front. I'm going to go and turn off my grid so I can see a little bit better. And I'm going to make a cube. Move this cube down a little bit. <clears throat> and then I'm going to right click on it and go to face mode. What I need, I'm going to switch to perspective here. I need this top one and the bottom one. Remember, you can either select it 
by just selecting the faces. So I have that top one, hold down shift, select the bottom one, now you have both. Or we can just marquee select, so we can just drag across, and then hold down control, and then drag across again in a smaller area, and you're actually going to deselect. As you can see, when we hold down control, it's a minus sign. Shift is adding, control is subtracting. So I have just those two. I'm going to tap R to go to my scale tool. I'm going to hold down shift and drag up. And now I have more faces that I can work with. If I go into my front viewport now, and I go to vertex mode, I can drag this thing over, drag this thing over. And then now I'm going to right click, go to face mode again. So now I can select faces. I'm going to marquee select drag over here. And you'll notice I have more than I need. I don't have this selected because when I dragged, I only went over to about here. So these wouldn't be selected, but this is selected. I only want these three. So if I hold down control and drag again, I just have those three. And you'll notice that the uh, gizmo shows up over on this side. That's very helpful. Now if I hold down shift and drag, I'm pulling out more polygons over here. A number of you are going to notice too that if you accidentally dragged and it doesn't look like you have anything, you might actually have more faces there than you need. To be able to go back in time, just hit control Z and you'll undo that last operation. Very helpful. So again, I'm going to just select these three. I did it the other way this time by just selecting those faces and not doing that fancy deselection mode. Shift, drag out. I'm going to do that to the other side, the front. So these three, shift, drag out. Okay. Remember these are pipes for the front and the back part. I'm going to take this, I'm going to add it to a new layer. Double click on this layer to name it. I'm going to call that work. Save. I'm going to go to create polygon primitives and I'm going to go into pipe. I'm going to click that little square. That's going to give me my options. I'm going to reduce this down to 12. Hit apply. All right. Same thing as my image plane on the X axis. I want to be able to rotate this not going uh, along the z-axis with it laying down. I want it to actually be standing upright. So what I got to do over here is just tell this thing to rotate 90 degrees. So now it's up. I'll move this over. I'm going to go into my front viewport. And now I'm going to position this thing. Now you're going to notice this is not aligned with my reference. My reference has this flat polygon and I have a intersection of polygons on the top so this is not correct what we need to do is rotate that let's see if 15 on the Y works nope wrong axis so it's probably the Z so if I hit 15 here there we go now that I have that let's actually scale this thing up a little bit more um, to make this follow our mesh so we go to shading and turn on x-ray okay I can see where the largest section of this is, so I'm going to block that out. So I block that out to be the biggest part, but the small hole here is still too small compared to what my reference is. So I'm going to go and select vertex mode, so I'm going to drag, so hold down the right mouse button until the flywheel comes out, and then select vertex mode. I'm going to left click drag across here, I'm going to scale up. Okay. Now that I have that, go to perspective view. Now when I did that, you'll notice that it scaled this out. I didn't want to do that. I'm going to undo. Scale has a couple different ways that we can work. We can work with that middle section, so that yellow box, or we can work with this right here. This will scale on two different uh, Axes. So this is an actually scale. Excuse me. On the uh, red and blue, which would be the x and z axis for us. Although technically, 
we move this around and we're not really looking at it in X and Z. It's in its object view. So ignore that. Just realize that this little doodad right here, we scale that. It's going to give us a scale, but it's not going to scale that out this time, which is very helpful. Okay, I'm gonna go to my face mode, select this one, hold down shift and double click, and it selects my whole edge loop. Now, I'm going to hold down shift and then left mouse button drag inwards. Looks like it glitched on me a little bit. Shift, drag inwards, there we go. Nope. There we go. So I just want to uh, kind of have an indent right here before I start to add these teeth. That just gives me a little bit of edge on that. Now I'm going to open up my modeling toolkit, which is right here. And I want to open up extrude. I want to turn off keep faces together and pull that out. I'm going to go into front view. I went too far in my reference, so I'm going to go back a little bit. Now, if I click over on these little cubes, it's actually going to turn on my scale for that gizmo. And now, if I select right here, I can actually scale that down. Okay, that's good. Now, I'm starting to build out these shapes, but it needs some more definition on it. So what I'm going to do is look at this from my top view and you'll notice it's pretty close to the amount of size of what this needs to be I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit and scale it down but if I move this out of the way for a second you can see I have one main polygon here and then one polygon edge loop here and then another edge loop there what I have is similar but not quite there so I actually have just one main edge loop I'm looking at so I can change that and the way I'm going to do that is go to face mode so right click go drag down to face select one and double click I'm going to press R on my uh, keyboard to go to scale mode hold down shift drag up okay let's turn on x-ray to see what that did okay that's pretty spot on. Let me close that, pull that down just a little bit with my reference along that line and that line. But these are not quite there. So what I'm going to do now, go to perspective, turn off x-ray. I'm just going to give it a little quick uh, spin around my model, see how I can make this better. What I'm going to do is right click, go to edge mode, so drag upwards when you're holding down the right click button double click double click holding down shift let's just scale this down a little bit and what I'm doing is adding a little bit of a lip there that looks pretty good I'm actually going to pull that in just a little bit too okay that's getting a lot better uh, looking for my reference now I'm gonna just pretend this doesn't exist I'm gonna uh, add it to my work layer that way I don't have to see it and start working on the front so I'm going to go to my uh, Create Polygon Primitives and Pipe again. And I'm going to make sure it's 12. Hit Apply. Okay, so the axis divisions are correct. Again, I have to rotate that on my x-axis 90 degrees. I have to drag this over. Go into your front viewport. Now, I haven't shown this yet. To be able to zoom in, on an object instead of having to actually hold down the control key and right mouse drag let's say that we're all the way out here if you hit F on the keyboard so just tap F it'll zoom you in right on that object it's gonna focus you onto that one object that you're working on so let's just rotate this a little bit so we kinda align this with this edge loop or not edge loop but this face this face and this face so if I kinda rotate it this way I can kinda see how I can move this around better I'm going to scale this up some more and now I'm going to start deleting some faces so if we count that's one two three four five six seven eight nine that's nine I need to save so I can get rid of three of these 
Now I know there's this and that and this and that. That looks different. We'll deal with that later, but just realize what we can do here is just delete out those pieces. Making sure, you'll notice right there, I have this one extra. Select that and delete that. That way you don't have any extra pieces to deal with later on. Now I'm gonna put this over my reference and turn on my X-ray. Okay, it clearly doesn't look the same. So if we hold down our right mouse button and then go to vertex mode, now we can start to shape the structure. So what I'm doing is making sure I'm left click dragging across my object and then moving uh, each of these in position. Now when I'm doing this, I'm making sure I am left click dragging across this. That's because it's not just one vertice that's there. You are working with a 3D object and you have one back here and one there. So if you just click on one, you're only gonna move one around at a time and you're gonna make a mess. So don't do that. Make sure you get in the habit, left click drag and then move it around. So this one actually needs to be up here. This one right there and here and just move these other around. Okay, let me just double check that OBS is still recording. It is good. Again, I am not on my main machine. I had to set this up in a hurry. My noise filters are not here, so I apologize. I'm sure you're hearing cat screaming or something weird going on. Um, probably the refrigerator hum. Okay, so now that I have this, let's fix some of this. Let's move that over to here. That's looking better. Let me actually move this one up. So you wanna have something like this. You have this larger polygon here and here, and we have this kind of look where there's this triangle shape here and a triangle shape there. We're gonna use a tool, we talked about this in class, it's the multi-cut tool. I'm gonna go into perspective mode. I'm gonna turn off my X-ray and I am going to left click on my multi-cut tool, start from this vertice, hold down shift, so you see that little black dot, left click, hold down, make sure you continue to hold down shift, left click. And then we'll go over to this side, making sure that we are actually selecting that one vertice. So I don't need to hold down shift now. I wanna make sure I let go of shift and then I click on that. So I've made one cut. To end that cut operation, hit Q or W or E or R, any modifier um, that you would see just for normal uh, manipulation uh, would end that. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna use the multi-cut. I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna hold down shift, click here, hold down shift, click here, and then again, let go of shift and click here. Hit the Q key, it'll end that operation. And then now let's go back into our front view, go to shading, X-ray, right click on your flywheel, and we're gonna go to vertex mode, drag this over, drag this down, looking good and that's looking a lot better I must have connected it to a different spot there compared to the other part so it looks like I made a mistake right there how do we fix that well I can double click and then I can end up going on my perspective to view, view that I have the new layer or that new um, edge so this one right here let's say if I want to get rid of this I can just go to edit mesh delete edge or vertex and it will get rid of that for me. So as you can see, that actually looks pretty correct. Let me see what's going on here. One of these is not though. One of these I connected to the top and the other one I connected to the bottom. So I'm, I am gonna delete this. I'm gonna double click, edit mesh, delete, add your vertex, and I'm gonna redo that. So I'm gonna use that multi-cut tool and I'm gonna make sure my uh, perspective panel, left click on that vertice, hold down shift, click here, hold down shift, click there, and then 
let go of shift and then left click again and hit Q to end that operation. So now let's look at it in the front view and they are in the same exact location. So if I go to vertex mode, I can just move that down. Okay, let's clean this up. When I deleted out the other side of this, it made a hole. You can see that hole right here and right there because I killed off some polygons there. If I right click, go to edge mode this time, select this one and that one and hit bridge, it'll fill that hole. I'll do that again down here. And I filled that hole. Now, I need to add a little bit more definition than what I'm seeing. So I'm just gonna select that one new polygon I created there, hold down shift and drag out. I'm gonna right click, go to vertex mode, move this down, and move this over. Right click, go to polygon mode, I'm going to hold down control, deselect this, hold down shift now, pull out. Again, let me back that train up. I'm going to select across all of this. So I know I have all these faces and that one front facing one right over here. I'm going to hold down control and now drag here. So I know I just have that one front face. Hold down shift and pull out. Now hold down your right mouse button key and then go to vertex mode, select the vertices, go here, and go there. Okay. Let's bring these all together now. So I got my front piece, and I have my work. And something demonic happened here. What just happened? Uh, somehow some rotations were applied. I have no idea why I'm seeing this. So let me uh, work with this to see if I can get this back into the same location. That was fun to see. All right, let me scale that down. So this legit forgot all of my uh, rotations and scales on this. Uh, somehow this cleared itself out. I have not seen this happen. Um, so that's fun. If it happens, we can fix it. You just gotta put it back to where it needs to go. And let's see, make sure this is centered, this piece. These are looking pretty good. Now, how do I prevent things like that from, from happening? If I wanna make sure that things stay in the position that they're at, I can go into my edit, delete by type history. Excuse me. And in the history, you'll notice under my inputs, I got a lot of information. It's very heavy, this model. So if I delete that history, it clears that up. You'll notice, so like, let's use this one as an example. I have a translate and a rotate value on these. If I want to get rid of that, so by default, it thinks that it's set up like this. Uh, we can go to modify freeze transformations. And when I do that, watch what happens. Everything's zeroed out. So it now thinks this is where it's supposed to start from. That's very helpful. So I applied that to all those um, to make that last action uh, happen again, you just hit the G key on your keyboard and it will perform the last action in Maya. Now I'm going to connect these pieces. So, first, let me go to x ray mode. I'm going to right click, hold down, go to vertex mode. I'm going to move these over. I'm going to move these over and then I'm going to scale these down a little bit. And then I'm going to move these over some more. Okay, now, turn off x-ray. I need these to be connected. Right now they can't connect in a nice and cohesive uh, flow. Um, they're two pieces. So first I need to connect them by combining them. So if I go to mesh, combine, now it's one object. 
it, you'll notice when I did that, it went from having two displaying in the outliner to just one. And it kind of has these ghost uh, group nodes that are in here with, with um, the memory of it being two separate objects. This is helpful because what I can do now is merge vertices because it's thinking of itself as one solid object. First though, I need to grab the faces on this one. I'm going to go to scale tool. Hold down the shift key and scale this thing down a little bit and then pull that out a little bit. What I'm doing is just giving myself a little bit of a lip for this thing to connect to and hopefully making it so it's going to be a little bit of a smoother transition uh, from this one shape to another. Now I'm going to hit delete so I have a hole there. I'm going to do that over here too. Select, 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 and delete. Now hold down your right mouse button, go to edge, double click, hold down shift, double click with your left mouse button. So again, we're in edge mode. I left double clicked and then I held down shift and then I double clicked with my left mouse button again. And I have both of those edge loops. If I go to my modeling toolkit and I go to my bridge and it bridged everything together. Very easy way to get that to connect. Now let's do the same thing on this other side. Let's go to our front view. And I'm going to turn on my x-ray. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to move these two up. And I'm going to move these over. OK. Again, I need to make these uh, connected and combined. First, I can tell this is gigantic, so we'll scale that down a little bit. I'm going to clean this up later um, to show you how do we actually make this uh, smoother. But first, I'm just go to my face mode, select this one, this one, this one. I'm going to scale, hold down shift, and scale it. Now I'm going to move this out a little bit. Scale that up a little bit to try and match it. And I'm going to scale it this way. And now, instead of using bridge, I wanted to show you a different way that we could do this. First, I need to delete some polygons. So let me go to x ray mode. I know I have this, this, and this that I don't need because it's the inside of the model. Same thing with this one. This one, this one, and this one can be deleted. Now that I have those deleted, what I can do is combine these, mesh, combine. And what I'm going to do is select this polygon right here, and I'm going to press this button. This is going to be a vertex snap. So if I left mouse button right in the middle, drag. It's going to snap to the nearest vertice. So again, left mouse button drag. Now you don't have to have this on. You can have that off and just hold down the V key. And when the D V key is pressed, it will keep that on. When you let go, it, it turns off. So that's a faster way to work with this tool. Either way will work. You'll notice I'm not pressing that button. It just happens when I hold down the V key. When I do that, I also want to make sure that I'm only moving the vertices over from one of my objects to another. You don't want to pick, so maybe you had it from the crescent side, you're pulling that over to another, and then you're picking some and going the other way. Make sure you're always thinking about the thing that you want to join to the other thing and never switch to the opposite direction because you'll have kind of a wavy pattern going on in there. Okay. I'm going to left click drag across all this area to making sure that I got the areas that I connected by doing the vertex snapping. Now I'm going to go to edit mesh merge. What that just did is instead of having two vertices that were laying on top of each other, it's now just one merged vertice. So it's a 
it's a solid model. There's no holes in it at all. Now we're just trying to figure out the detailing on this. Because if I hit the three button on here, oof, that that's Mr. Krabs' hand. I don't I don't like that. There's no definition on it. We need to fix this. And that's what hard edges are all about. The first easy thing I'm going to do is add some definition to the middle section of this. So to do that, I'm going to go to face mode and select this one and that one. If I go to the front view, turn on X-ray, I'm going to hold down the shift key and scale. It's a little bit hard to see inside of there. Um, again, I'm looking at the essence of the model. If you have something that looks like a crescent wrench and is using the techniques that I'm looking for, um, that's, that's the main goal for this exercise. And again, remember, you can always resubmit work for me. Um, you get one time to resubmit for each of these exercises as long as you're submitting your projects and exercises on time. Um, and it looks like you actually did the work. You didn't just rush something in to get it in so you could resubmit it later on. That's just abusing the system. Okay, so I'm gonna hold down shift, drag that in again. Scale it. Again, I'm gonna hold down shift, drag it in. And all I'm doing is adding some of this little tiny detail. So when I hit three on the keyboard, it kinda has an indent on there. Now you'll notice when it indents, it looks ugly. It, it kinda doesn't have a smooth edge to this spot. It's not a square, it's kind of round. So to be able to fix that, we can add a bevel to these edges. We can double click right here. So I'm in edge mode. I'm double clicking here. Double click here. Double click here. And bevel. And now I'm going to reduce this. Now what this should do for me, so I'm reducing the fraction. So I just have this little extra line. When I hit three on the keyboard, it now just added kind of a hold edge on there. And it made it so there's that indent, which is a lot cleaner looking. Now you'll notice on the other side, I didn't do that. I did a typical um, mess up. And I wasn't thinking about beveling and pulling things around at the same time. Always make sure you're checking that. Talking and moving things around sometimes can be dangerous. So um, ignore that part for my tutorial. It should look like this side. So make sure you're, you're beveling on that side as well. All right, now if we press three again, this looks nice and round, but I'm losing all the definition on the teeth. We need to fix that too. Also, good time to save. I haven't saved at all. Ranch, save, okay. I want to keep all of the definition on the inside of this, but I don't need anything else. So I'm going to go in my front view. I'm going to right click, go to edge, and I'm going to use now this uh, tool right here. This tool is a lasso selection tool, and this allows me to just draw a selection out. You'll notice everything that was selected was in that lasso. Now I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to deselect stuff that I don't need. What I don't need is any geometry that goes beyond the teeth. So I'm actually going to get rid of this edge loop. And hopefully if I hold down the control button, double click, it got rid of the edges there. I'm actually going to deselect around here as well. I'm going to check that other side so I don't do what I did to that other piece. And it looks like I have the exact same selections on both sides, making sure I don't have any of these little pieces there. I'm going to go into here and hit bevel. And now if I hit three on my keyboard, that bevels up that piece a little bit better. So it holds those edges inside of that. It's still a little bit too smooth for my liking. Um, so I'm going to go back before I apply that bevel. I'm just going to tap Z. Alright, I'm at this point. I'm going to turn on bevel again, but I'm going to increase my seg segments to 2. And now if I hit 3, 
I should see much crisper. That's way better. Okay. Now, I still want a little bit of um, some definition on this model. If I hit three again, I look at this. This is looking pretty good. Check out that. Woof. That's, that's not even remotely uh, something I'd want to use on my car or anything. It, it just looks creepy. So we need to add some hold edges on here. What I'm going to do is go to edge, double click, and I'm going to go here, double click, double click. All I'm doing is basically the outline. So I'm going around that outline, making sure I have it selected. Go on the other side, do the same thing. I'm going to turn off my reference at this point. I don't need it. Double click Oop. over here, over here, over here. Okay, so I've got this selected. Now, I'm going to also add this piece and this piece. Try and keep those have that same beveling on it. And I also need to add this one, that one, that one, that one. So I want to have this entire outline of the shape stay hard edged when I look at it with the mesh preview. So now that I have this, that's looking good. Let's go into our modeling toolkit again, press bevel, and it should default back to one segments and not the two again. That's good. I'm going to hit three. That's a much nicer look to it. Now there is something going on on the edge of this. So I'm going to hit one on that just to look. The reason why I did that is because I never moved that um, polygon up a little bit more. We can fix that even after we bevel just by grabbing these and these, making sure nothing else is selected. I'm going to just pull this up a little bit more. Now when I go into three, that's looking a lot better. Okay. That is looking pretty good. Now you might want to add beveling to here along this top and bottom, but the way I see it is that's where your hand's gonna go and that actually should be smooth. So that's actually pretty good. So this is what I'm looking for from you guys. Um, make sure when this happens, this shouldn't be called P-pipe. I want this to say wrench. I want it to be in a wrench layer for when I'm grading. Save that. And I don't want all this history here, so I'll hit edit, delete by type, and history. So now I've got the model. And last but not least, file save as or not. And we'll just put my name in here. So that way I know who it is when I'm grading and it makes sense. So I'll save that. And that is it for the wrench tutorial.